Um, this time I'm going to try and sort out the clutch on the water boxer engine here. Um, if you watched the last video, you would have seen me mention that I was going to take it up to CG Motorsports to get them to rebuild the clutch for me. Um, we've decided to stick with the original clutch, just cleaned it up, and I'm going to try and adjust it instead. Um, so I'll talk you through what I'm going to do, and then hopefully we can get this thing sorted. Right, a quick back to basics on how a clutch works. There's three main components. You've got the flywheel, which is fixed to the crankshaft of the engine. You've got the clutch disc itself, which goes in there. And then you've got the pressure plate. This thing is spring-loaded, so this, this part of the pressure plate here presses the disc against the flywheel and makes it grip. But these springs have a, a strange characteristic in them, in that the the clamping force that they exert by, by pressing this part out isn't linear so as you clamp this down those springs will will exert more and more pressure and then suddenly they'll exert less and less pressure so you need to adjust exactly where this is positioned in relation to the flywheel and you do that by putting shims in between it so that's got no shims or it could be shimmed you know out here sort of thing so it will exert a different amount of pressure and, uh, and squeeze the pressure plate in there, squeeze the, um, the clutch disc in and transfer maximum torque, okay? The trouble is that I don't know how many shims or how much spacing I need to get behind the, the cover plate, the pressure plate, to get to the maximum um, position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it up together with friction disc, pressure plate, bolt it on with no shims, and then using this tool that I've made out of an old input shaft, I'm going to put that in there, put a torque wrench on it, the flywheel's already locked off, put a torque wrench on and see what torque the clutch can hold before it starts to slip. And then I'm going to take it all apart, put a shim between it behind all these bolts, do it again, see what that is, and then do a number of different shims until we can find out exactly what the optimum number of shims is to get the maximum uh, grip out of the clutch. To complicate things further, I've actually got two of these pressure plates. This is an old one, you can see it's got hot at some point and is discoloured and it was warped so it's been skimmed flat so it's now not warped at all but it is thinner than the brand new one of these that I've got. They're both Kennedy, I bet you can't see that, they're both Kennedy stage 3 ones so they're uh, about the strongest you can get and the disc that I'm going to use is not this one, this one's the burnt out one from before. It's a Black Magic, which is a sintered iron disc, which is supposed to be much grippier and better for high power. So, uh, yeah, let's put it together with no shims, with the, um, we'll use the new pressure plate to start with, I think, and see what torque it'll hold. Write that down, take it off, put a shim in, do it again, put more shims in, and we'll eventually get to a point where we can see exactly where the maximum torque is. Uh, so. I'll do it once, show you what I'm doing, and then I'll do the rest off camera, and then I'll come back when I've done it and I've got some results. Just give everything a good clean with some brake clean first. Don't want any grease on there, confusing the, uh, the readings. There we go. You can see this pressure plate has got hot as well. Sorry, this flywheel, not this pressure plate. Um, but again, it's not warped and it's nice and flat. There's no grooves or ridges in it, so that's going to be good to go. Right, here we go. Got the disc pressure plate and my alignment tool stroke torque measuring device thing. Put that in there. That's all. Clamp that down. That's the first one. Right, that's tightened down, let's get a torque wrench on there and figure out where it starts to let go. This torque wrench works in newton meters, so we'll start at um, about 100 I think. 
which is something like 80 foot pounds so it should easily hold that but we're working it's got to start somewhere so we'll start there uh, right 98 99 100 so it should easily hold this yep no problem let's bump it up to 150. That's um, 140, 150. Let's try this. Yep, held 150. Holding 170. Can't get it anymore. Oh, yeah. 170. Right, that's 210 newton meters. Let's see what happens now. Just starting to slip at 210. So let's back off a bit, let's call it down to 200. Slipping at 200. Uh, yeah, I need to go down a bit more, don't I? Let's go down to uh, 190. Well, that's 196. So if I go up to There, that's 190. Oops. There's a torch falling off the bench. Almost held 190. Let's go down to Still slipping at 195. Let's go down to 180. There's 182. 180. Like that. Better. 182. 
two. <clears throat> right, that's holding at 182. Sorry, 180. So we'll call that 180 with no shims in. I'll write that down, put a shim behind them, see what we got. Right, with no shims, that started to slip at 180 newton meters. So we'll start there and see if, how much more it can take before it starts to slip. So it's 180 first, make sure it doesn't slip at that. Nope. Nice and solid there. Let's pump it up to 190. One ninety. Try that. Oh. Yeah. Just starting to go at one ninety, so we'll make sure that wasn't a fluke. starting to go so we'll say that those half mil spacers there increase the holding capacity of the clutch by 10 newton meters so let's take them out put some one mils in see what difference that makes right one milli spacers in this now we're starting at 190 newtons See how much this will hold. Just starting to slip there. Let's try that again. Yeah, just just starting to slip, but it was harder than before, so it's definitely holding a little bit more than 190 Nm. Is it enough? Right, 1.5 mil spacers now, uh, still set at 190, let's see what this holds. Yep, definitely can't move that. Let's crank it up to 200. Uh, hang on. Yeah, that's right. 96. 200. <laughs> Just barely move that at 200. Uh, should we try 2 mil? It's 1.5 at the moment. Yeah, let's stick two millers and see what happens there. Right, here we go. This has got two mil spacers and we are currently at... Where are we at? 200 newton meters of torque. Let's give that a try. Right there. Right. That's holding that really solidly. We're almost at the limit of what this thing can do. Let's pump it up to 210. 
Right, that's it, that's 210 newton metres. That's the most that this torque wrench can show. Uh, so, let's see what happens now. <coughs> yep, that's holding that as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that's more than more torque than the engine makes, uh, and it's certainly a lot more than it was before I started this. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I'll torque all these cover bolts up, leave it at that, and uh, chuck it in the car. Hopefully it'll work. If not, it's all going to come out again. Uh, but I can't test any more torque because my torque wrench won't go any higher. So anything more than this is just guessing now. But it's holding more than the engine makes. And don't forget this clutch is cold, so when the clutch is heated up, it should grip even better. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that, took the engine back in the car, and I can get on with the rest of the jobs that need doing. So, um, yeah, that's a little short video on shimming out the clutch. Uh, hope you found it interesting. Give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment and all that, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.